This series of videos is about visualizing data using ggplot, and this video starts by introducing uh, the basics of the ggplot2 package. ggplot is a very popular uh, data visualization library in R. Uh, it is widely used because it makes very good quality figures very quickly. And it's interesting because it's declarative, which means that you describe what you want to the computer as opposed to describing how to build it. And that contrasts with imperative, where you describe how to build something step by step. I'm going to slide out of the way here for a moment uh, so that we can see how to install ggplot. Two, uh, we do it in the usual way using install.packages, parentheses, quotes, and then the name of the package, which in this case is ggplot2. The two is there because there was an earlier version of the package, and then they completely uh, rewrote how it worked, and so there's a two to represent this second version. That's why that's there. And so we always need to remember the two when we install the package, but also when we load it. And now I'll go ahead and slide back over here into my corner. We can go up here now to our text editor and load that package so that we can work with it. So library, parentheses, and then ggplot2, and we can run that line to load the library. And then the other thing that we need to do to get started is load the data that we're going to be working with that we talked about uh, in the last video, the Uhuru data on Acacia. And so we'll call that data Acacia. And then we will assign it the output of the read.csv function. We need to start by giving it the name of the file we're loading, and I'm going to start typing Acacia and then hit tab because it's kind of a long, complicated file name. And then we need a couple of other arguments for reasons that we talked about uh, in the video introducing this data set. And so I'll put a comma and then enter to help us all fit on the screen. And then uh, we're going to say sep is equal to quotes backslash t. So that's set telling R that the separator is tab, that this is tab delimited data, comma, enter, and then na dot strings is equal to a vector made using the C function that includes uh, the string dead. And so that's to uh, get rid of that use of dead uh, in the height column. And so if we run this, we'll get the data frame uh, that was introduced in the last video. So now we can start to make graphs with this data using ggplot. And the start of every plot made using ggplot is the ggplot function. The function is just ggplot, not ggplot2, just to be maximally confusing. And if we run this function on its own, we'll see that on the plots tab down here, there's a blank canvas. This has created a base ggplot object that we can add things to but it hasn't added anything to it yet. So it's just this blank canvas to start with. We can also add optional arguments inside the ggplot function that set the defaults for information to be shared throughout the rest of our plot making. And the two main arguments that we typically use here are data, so we'll say data equals and this argument defines the data frame that we're going to be making graphs from. 
And so in our case, that's acacia. And then the second argument is mapping. So we'll say mapping is equal to. And mapping describes which columns of the data are used for different parts of the plot. And we create a mapping using the AES function that stands for aesthetic. And then inside that function, we write the relationship between uh, a piece of the graph. So let's say the X axis, where we say X is equal to, and then the column in the data frame that we want to use for that piece. And so let's say we want to plot the relationship between the circumference of the acacia and its height. So we could say x is equal to the circumference column, and that's all caps circ in this data set. And then y is equal to the height column, which again is in all caps, I guess because they were really angry about their column names. And if we run this line, we'll see that we still basically have a blank canvas down here, but it knows that it's going to be putting circ on the x-axis and height on the y-axis. But it hasn't added any data to the graph yet. And that's because we need to tell ggplot how we want it to add data to the graph, and we do that using layers. To add a new layer, uh, we add a plus sign after our ggplot function. I'm going to hit enter here, and then we add a geom, which stands for geometry. And to make a scatter plot, the geome is geome underscore point. And what this tells ggplot is that we want to represent uh, the circumference and height values as points. And so now, if we run this line, we'll see our first graph. We have circumference on the x-axis, height on the y, and each point on this graph is a single value from our table plotting the value from the height column on the y-axis and the value from the circumference on the x-axis. To change things about how the data is represented for an individual layer, we can add optional arguments to that layer. And so we can change things like the size, which we could set equal to three, the size of those points, the color of those points, which we could set equal to blue, and the transparency of those points, which in computing is typically called alpha, which we could set equal to 0 0.5. So if we rerun this, we'll see we've changed the size of the points, the color of the points, and we've set them to be transparent so we can see uh, where multiple points are overlapping. We can also change uh, the labels on our plots if we want to. Every time we want to do something new to a ggplot graph, we add that plus at the end of the line and then hit enter. And then to change the labels, uh, we use the labs function. And then in there, we give it the labels that we want to apply to particular parts of the plot. And so we could set the x label equal to uh, circumference in centimeters, 
the Y label to height in meters. And if we wanted to add a title, we could say that the title of this plot should be Acacia Survey at Uhuru. And if we run this now, we'll see that our X label is updated, our Y label is updated, and we have a title for the plot. So that's an introduction to the basics of ggplot. We start with the ggplot function, which includes information on data, the data table we're going to make graphs for, and the mapping, which we make by using the AES function, and then inside that AES function, providing information on which parts of the table are supposed to be represented in which ways on the graph, and then we use the plus sign to add a layer, one or more layers, to the plot using geomes. And we looked at geome point to make scatter plots. And we can add or change the labels on those plots by, again, adding the labs function to our ggplot object.